Hello! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the secret history living inside of your aquarium. Tonight we're looking inside of my aquarium and we're doing a species spotlight. Bear with me, it's these, this busy little dude who is swimming in circles that we're looking at. These are Maytang, Maytang Danios, and uh, they're a little different than other Danios in that they... Uh, are really quick, and I mean, I mean, you know, Danios are quick if you've ever had them, but this guy is real quick, they have a lot of energy, there we go, there's better lighting, and they're also known as the Fire Bar Danio. Now, they're called that because this is a young one, but as they get older, they develop these strong orange to uh, kind of reddish or metallic orange that you can see forming there with gold sheen. Uh, bars on their side and then the bars as they go towards the back actually start to turn into their lateral line marking and that's a commonality in a lot of Danios so the line that runs down the length of the fish so let's try to I'll show you in my in my flame Danios over here these guys with the spots they have a line that goes down their tail and you see it. there's a black line by their tail running their length. Well, that is their lateral line marking. <clears throat> their lateral line is a line of organs and sensory equipment that allow them to feel what's going on in the water and, uh, depending on the fish, uh, keep stability and do all sorts of different things. So... This fish is quite the active fish. This tank has good flow in it, so it could be hanging out in the stream, swimming up against it like the guppies do when they want some exercise. But instead, they're doing cartwheels right now. Um, so I think this is just kind of burning energy kind of pattern uh, because I fed them and they've got some extra calories in their system. But this is a really pretty fish. And so the Maytang... Danio is also known as Maytangensis, and it was discovered by a man named Feng, uh, last name Feng, in 1997. Now, it's not that they hadn't been seen in the hobby. In fact, these guys have been in, in the hobby for a really long time. It's just that they weren't properly classified because there are a lot of Danios that are similar. Now, this Danio is threatened in that it lives in the Shan River uh, Basin, or Shan region, I should say. There's a the Ping River that it also lives in coming out of uh, the Shan drainage, and it is most commonly found in the Ping River, and also in Thailand, Myanmar, uh, it can be found in other drainages as well. However, they believe that it was probably native to the uh, Lake Inlay originally, um, and it may have escaped during a flood or something, but there is a uh, concentration of them in the lake that have a little bit different markings that go by Shang, Shang, Shanensis, Shan, in, Shanensis, sorry guys, it's hard to say that word, uh, which are basically the same fish, and you'll see them uh, for sale from time to time. Uh, also kind of discovered in that time when Myanmar uh, politically changed from a military junta or dictatorship into uh, more open to Western travelers in the world, and Lake Inle was really explored and found to be a crazy wealth of diversity. These guys would be in my Lake Inle tank, which is across the room over here, but they're just too darn uh, energetic and uh, rambunctious to be in there. I would love someday to have a big tank if I could afford it uh, and put all sorts of the wild Danios and Cyprinids. So these guys are a Cyprinid. You can see there's a female here. You can tell them apart because uh, they're big. Their bellies are big. They're wider. And... Uh, they have kind of a clear spot in their belly, but that's she's holding eggs. You can tell she has eggs in that belly. It's swollen like she ate a lima bean or something. Now, you'll also see 
that the other uh, Danios, the spotted flame Danios, are also uh, interested in them. They also w lived with the Tin Winnie and with my leopard Danios at different points in time. And they all seem to interchangeably kind of be interested in one another for whether it's mating or just territory. But they all seem to kind of get along in a way where they recognize one another as at least the same species, like the same uh, organism. Whereas they kind of ignore a lot of the other fish in the tank um, most of the time. Now to take care of these fish, you should probably have flowing water. Keeping them in a big group is best. They tend to be a shoaling species and very active, as you can see. I've let these guys settle in for a couple days now, and uh, I picked these up from Aquarium Zen with a fellow viewer, Jay Blair. So, shout out to Jay and Aquarium Zen. Uh, basically, these fish are best kept like any hill any hill stream species would be. Uh, you want flowing water, you want the tank to be turning over its water at least four or five times an hour uh, minimum, and you want uh, plenty of room for them to swim. This guy is doing cartwheels just like none other still, uh, even though he's got this big tank that he could be swimming laps in like some of the other fish do. Now, another special thing about this uh this variety of the fish which now they're breaking out into four different species what used to just be called fire bar danios and they thought they were just variations of the same fish uh, <clears throat> but they're now finding that they're they're quite different and these ones that originally were from lake inlay they have color on the tips of their fins of kind of a I guess it I guess it would be uh called orange but it's really more of a red with it's like orange with purple which don't seem like colors that go together at all but you can see both and it just depends on the angle of the the fish and that is because they have these uh guanine and guarine crystals in their uh in uh, in their scales and those allow them to reflect. They're called iridophore cells. And that's what makes them so shiny. So they bring a lot of uh, movement and bright, shiny light into your display. Unlike other fish, um, you know, a lot of times guppies and other fish, you get a little bit of the shimmer. But these guys are so bright that they're hard to even focus on uh, their silver and bronze colors that reflect. They just look like a white blur a lot of the times. So I apologize for that. Now, back to keeping them. They love planted tanks. They come from streams that aren't heavily planted, but if they, they, they do have vegetation hanging over the edge of the stream, and that's kind of where they hang out, or behind large rocks, so good rocks with some algae, and uh, at the bottom, either smooth stones, sand, or a good bed of crypt, uh, cryptocurns, or, uh, you know, something from Southeast Asia would be preferable, but, you know, you could put whatever you want in a tank, and they'll be okay. They're a pretty versatile fish you can keep them anywhere from about 68 degrees up to 82 degrees uh, with their preference being right in the middle somewhere and to get them to breed you put the males and females together they're egg scatterers and basically if you split the male and female up for a little while when you put them back together it's like fireworks they uh, will have babies. They're known to not have huge groups of babies like some uh, Danios do. But the female, you can see the female that I have here, even though she's not full grown by any means, uh, she's at her full length, but she's not fully grown. And she's got a belly that's got to have, you know, 20 or 30 eggs in it at least. And they have this really cool uh, gold shimmer right down their spine. And I'm trying to catch that for you guys. Um, 
but it's just not showing on film super well, so I apologize. As for other water requirements, pH, they do like a little bit acidic water, but uh, neutral is fine as well. They like lower TDS, but up to 250 will be okay. And uh, they do seem to get along with other fish. Uh, they get a little bit, there's some little skirmishes here and there, but uh, nothing, no, I haven't seen any fin nipping. Uh, and they're pretty much the same as all small to medium danios uh, in in the same area of care. So, they're going to love bloodworms, daphnia, brine shrimp, all that kind of stuff. If you're breeding them, you probably want to breed them in a tank that's got either a screen at the bottom or a plant in the corner, a, a mop. And you know what is crazy is... Uh, an egg was just dropped out of one of the females that wasn't on screen, but here she is now. Um, so, seeing that I just got them and they're just getting comfortable, it, it's very likely that she'll lay her eggs in this big tank and they'll just get eaten. Males may not even fertilize them. But, you look for that big belly, separate them, and then put them back together in a tank uh, where they can just drop and scatter. If you notice the eggs quickly, pull them right out as soon as you see the eggs because they will eat their eggs. They have no parental care. But if uh, you haven't seen any eggs, leave them in there for eh, two to three days and then uh, pull them out if they didn't breed for some reason. Uh, but I'd usually leave the tank for a week just to make sure that no little newborns are coming out of somewhere that you didn't see. So... Great little fish. It'd be perfect in an aquascape. I apologize about I apologize about the the reflectiveness of these fish and how quickly they're moving. Uh, but there's not too much to do about that without making them very uncomfortable. So go ahead and look up pictures of the Maytang uh, Danio or Firebar Danios. I think they're quite pretty even as young fish when they don't have all their markings yet. But um, they also move a little interesting by uh, flexing their back uh, caudal fin. They, if you can see it, I don't know if it'll show up on film very well either, but they flex it, kind of, uh, they constrict it, pull it in towards their center mass, and then that allows them to do a little bit extra thrusting rather than just the zigzag back and forth motion of most fish. So that's something that I noticed they're doing that's really different than a lot of the, the Danios that I have or the Reed Tetras and so forth. So, all right, guys, that is about all I have to say about these fish. But they're real purdy, and I suggest you pick them up. I noticed the wet spot has them on their website. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you all are doing well, taking care of your fish and one another, and that you enjoyed this little species special. Like it if you like it. If you don't, well, sorry. Uh, and if you want to see more content like this, but better filming of the fish that would actually stand still better, um... Uh, Feel free to subscribe, and I also have a Patreon page if you want to help me get a better camera uh, <laughs> to track these quick-moving fish. That would be awesome. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.